expanding your Conflict 47 starter army today on Attention Span Labs. So with, with that aside, uh, obviously I highly recommend this game. I want you to check it out. And so um, to make it easy for you to get started, I, I want to talk about how you can use the starter sets, which are very affordable. They're all about around 100 bucks. They're often on sale. Um, in fact, Warlord Games is having such a good deal now that if you're in the U.S., because shipping is higher, because everything you order, if you order one blister, it's going to cost $20 to ship. But on the other hand, if you order 50 things, it's still going to cost $20 to ship. And they're having such a good deal now that any order you you make, you can get one free unit of, and then they have a certain list of them, but if you want to play British or Americans or Germans, um, these are mostly bolt action units, but I don't think there's any specific Conflict 47 units, but there's plenty of bolt action units, and even with the Conflict 47 army, the bulk of your miniatures are going to be bolt action miniatures. So you can get, for instance, a $40 box of American paratroopers for free, a $40 box of, of uh, German paratroopers for free, $40 box of British commandos for free. Um, all this, all this stuff, um, just just for ordering from there, and that you know you're gonna, you probably want to go on Warlord uh, and buy a starter set. So you can buy either a bolt action starter set or a Conflict 47 starter set. Now I ended up buying both. I got the the um, Band of Brothers set, which basically had 24 U.S. paratroopers in the M1943. These are these guys here. These I have formed two squads of 11 men apiece, um, and and that's it. Um, but then the bolt action starter set comes with five power armor guys, uh, 20 regular U.S. infantry, which I basically haven't painted except for this sniper here and a, a couple support guys like his spotter. Uh, it comes with a Tesla tank, a Tesla Sherman, and a Coyote Infantry Support Walker. That is a, a good start. It's not. I think it's not really suitable for... You can certainly play the game with it. Also, it comes with sufficient order dice for every unit. It comes with dice to play. It comes with these suppression markers. Um, so that's a, a, let me briefly go back. One other cool thing, and I think this is, is similar to uh, Stargrunt, which is my all-time favorite sci-fi game, but you can hit a unit and not kill anyone and still weaken it by doing um, by putting pins on it. So that's a, that's, a, that's a pin marker. And the more pins you have, the less effective a unit gets. Eventually you may have to rally to try and shake off the pins, but if you have pins, you're not going to be able to, you're, you're, redu you're reduced by one for every pin marker you have when you're shooting at the enemy. Um, you can eventually acquire so many pins you break. You can, when you, once you have a pin, when you don't have a pin, your unit just does what you tell it to. But when they have a pin, they actually have to pass a morale test which is affected by the pins, and if they fail that, they go down, and they can't do anything then for the turn. So that um, you get these these markers anyway. But but that is another really great part of the game um, that you're probably not familiar with if you're only playing games like like Warhammer. Um, and that's pins are actually more important than than killing units many times because you can make a unit um, less effective or sometimes completely ineffective by by just um, putting a lot of fire on it, which is a very good representation of, of the psychological aspect of warfare um, and the, you know, and, and reality. All right, so, yeah, what was I talking about? Yeah, so this the starter set comes with everything you need to play. It comes with a paperback copy of the main rule book. Um, and it comes with the, your stat cards for everything, um, and, you know, you will need... It even comes with a little paper ruler if, if you don't have a tape measure or a ruler. Um, and it comes with, like, the... The quick reference sheet and everything. They're about a hundred bucks a piece. The American one, I, I suggest that you're going to need more infantry, um, just to, to bulk out. Uh, certainly, the power armor probably to bulk out your squad. E even they're even with like the heavy units, like the power armor or the werewolves or the, the German vampires or the Japanese zombies or whatever. Um, they are well. The zombies are usually going to be in larger formations. 
Um, they just absorb a lot of hits. They don't get pinned and so forth. They're, they're mindless, but their huge numbers are, are just dangerous but in close combat almost entirely. Um, but you uh, will need for larger units that, that can shrug off hits, like, say, the werebears, the werewolves, the various power armor units, the, the noctiagers, the vampires, right? You generally get, like, three to five to start, uh, and that's especially, that's not enough. Um, unless you can really sneak around a lot and get, get them and get lucky and keep them completely behind cover until you can just run right up on people, they're going to get chewed up. So you need to bulk out, especially your power armor units, at least... Uh, I'd say from five, I have, I have an eight-man unit now. Um, you're going to want to bulk up your werewolves and so forth uh, from three to five at least. Um, so you, you want to get that. You want to, uh, one thing that, especially from the American side, that is lacking, there's no machine gun teams in the box set. You can make light machine guns for the squad, but medium machine guns are really where it's at. Um, and Americans can have up to three machine gun teams, which are separate units in a platoon, in every platoon. So they, you know, and you can have, say, three medium machine guns or two medium machine guns and one heavy machine gun and so forth. And that they're important to have. You don't get any indirect fire stuff. Um, you don't get any transports that may or may not um, bother you too much, depending on how much cover you have and how slow a pace of a game you, you want to run. But transports are, are very effective uh, essential actually for both for protecting your units when they're under fire adding a bit of additional fire so you can see i have these half tracks and they have you know they're festooned with machine guns um and you know they're they're good to provide um some heavy fire support for your unit as they deploy and then to most importantly to move them fast especially you want, you want to take advantage of roads to seize objectives and so forth and get there before the enemy um, doesn't have any of those so you might want to buy some half tracks might want, or some decent half trucks um, these these two units are are very good and they're a very good start for for your uh, rift tech which is what they call it because it technology that came through the rift um, the Tesla tank is extremely effective against both armor and infantry um, so the aside from I think the uh, yeah so the the Tesla tank against armor the this cannon does uh, equivalent to having a super heavy gun on a tank like the Pershing uh, it has a much reduced range it's only like a three foot range as opposed to like the Pershing I think can fire like five feet or something like that but um, so it does as much penetration and it doesn't it doesn't uh, reduce penetration at long range but it's also excellent against infantry because for every uh, normally if you're firing like an explosive uh, or a you know an anti-tank round an infantry it can kill one guy um, but this for every time it hits an infantry unit you roll a d6 so you could potentially hit up to six guys uh, with with uh, with a plus one pen um, and really cut through enemy squads these coyotes are great the coyote and the jackal which is basically the same thing the jackal has the jackal has one less ignore the gun that i put on top um they can both have flamethrowers and they both have a medium machine gun the flamethrowers are optional um but the coyote has a, a, a m2 50 caliber and the jackal doesn't but the jackal can fly it can jump over obstacles uh they're they're agile they can they can move a lot they're devastating in close combat. The first time we played, I ate up like three of my my friends' um, Japanese exoskeleton squads with just just the, the two of these guys. Just turn after turn, they kept chopping them up. Um, so they're very good for assault. They do not stand up against their their light armor, so they don't stand up against heavy fire from uh, you know other walkers or something like that. But you you'll also want. Um, but one of these is good to start. But these, these are, are pretty good point by. Um, you'll probably want at some point um, some specialized units, but you don't definitely don't need them to start. Um, like for instance, the uh, this is my most recent model. I just finished the MAA4 Bruin. It's a medium walker, but it has uh, has a 75 millimeter gun on the on the basic Sherman. Has an M2 up top. Uh, and then these arms count as a heavy howitzer. So that uh, something like that or a piece of towed artillery, you'll want to have something that now the Bruin cannot do indirect fire, but like say a mortar unit can do indirect fire, which means you don't need line of sight. Um, 
they're mostly good at fixed targets and so useful against using for, 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 uh, shooting at fixed targets because it's easier to hit things when they don't move turn after turn. Um, but this is a good anti-tank and anti-infantry and and, and um, a, a destroyer of, of houses, of barns, and so forth. Buildings are very important in this game because you can hide in them and shoot at them and it makes it much harder. It makes it very costly uh, to clear out a building. The nice thing about this with their 3d6 damage and 1d6 pins, like um, if they do, if they hit a structure and they do at least 12, and this counts for any high explosive weapon, if they hit it at least 12 times, it collapses the whole building, kills everybody inside it. Uh, so that makes things uh, very useful. These have a six foot range. You can park it out at the far end of your table and hit hit units in the rear of your enemy's deployment zone and so forth. Um, but this is an excellent choice, I think, for artillery. They do have Tesla artillery. They have you know, any of the pack howitzers or so forth, uh, self, the priests with self-propelled guns. Uh, but yeah, so you're, the, you're basically missing machine guns, uh, heavy artillery and indirect fire, um, and maybe if, if you're if you're more of a light strike force person, you may want some Jeeps. Again, I printed these Jeeps so they cost me literally nothing. I got the designs off of, um, where did I get them? Um, not Shapeways. Uh, Thingiverse, right, yeah. And uh, now the, the actual crew is from Warlord. I, got them, I, I bought them too. Because um, they don't look as good, obviously, if, if nobody's driving them. Um, you, may, may, you may want a fast reconnaissance force. You may want some recce units like the, these. These are these are fast. Um, the the recce rule I talked about before is the pond, uh, pond skater. So those are some things uh, you may want to think about as you're as you're bulking out your squad, bulking out your platoon. Um, pay attention to your rule, your platoon selectors. See what you can actually take. Um, of course, if you're playing with with your friends, people you know that are willing to experiment, you can come up with new platoon selectors and so forth. And in fact, Clockwork Goblin did put out some new missions, some very interesting missions like the, the Battle of Brussels, um, which do have some some new platoons in there that you, that you can play with that are like heavily walker oriented. And you can run armored, armored platoons in this game too, just like you can in bolt action, that are very tank heavy. They can have almost no infantry. Um, but generally, this is an infantry-heavy game. So the, the starter set is a very good place to start, even for the Americans. Some of the starter sets are fantastic right out of the box. The German one has comes with a walker, a, uh, a light walker, and a super tank. Um, well, it's, 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 a, it's a Panzer IV with the strange weapon, sort of like the Tesla gun. Uh, it comes with um, a bunch of Panzer Grenadiers. And it comes with werewolves and vampires, so that's a that's a really cool set to get right off the bat. Uh, I think um, my friend Jeff said the Japanese set is very good, and my friend Russ, who had bought the the, the the Russian set, I'm not sure exactly how he feels about it. It's not, um, I think, it's super infantry heavy, and the Russians get like infantry, infantry squad for free. Um, but it does come with heavy power armor, and it comes with. Uh, um, a three-man unit of werebears. I said you're going to want to bulk up the the werebear, werewolf units, the vampire units, so that they can take more damage, because they will they will be killed right yeah, at long range, especially. Um, all like the horror monstrosity units are um, they're close-up units at all. The exception to this is like the American Paragon troopers, which are literally like superheroes. They're usually immune to horror, and they're tough, and they're fast. They do all the, well, they have some other special rules, but they're basically the only genetically enhanced units that um, have ranged weapons. Uh, I don't think they cause horror, though. But these you don't necessarily want to get right off the, right off the top uh, of, right off the bat. Um, oh, I guess one other thing you will want to get, and I think technically you have to get, that's not in the starter set, you need an officer, at least one officer. <laughs> Um, I have my officers here attached to jeeps, so they can move around, and they, you know they have one or two guys accompanying them. Um, I think every plat every platoon needs needs one officer. Uh, but they, yeah, I don't think they come with any of the box sets that I'm aware of. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. But they definitely don't come in the American box set. So that's why I would recommend. Um, there's a lot of cool armies. The the. You know, frankly, there's. I want to play more. I have a bunch of German units, and eventually I'll get around to, to painting them and assembling them. Um, 
the thing I really want to play with the Germans is they have a King Tiger tank with a heavy rail gun, which shoots like 84 inches and like almost guaranteed to knock down buildings. Um, the Italians have fantastic looking power. You can see them there, right? They have really cool looking power armor. Um, their, their doctrines are, are interesting. The um, Finns, they have ski troopers. Um, the the British can have robots. They have, the British have a lot of American equipment. Uh, the Russians can actually have old American equipment too, but the, they have like variations of walkers. Their, their robots are really cool. Um, they have war dogs that are trained to like eat zombies. Uh, some of the, the only uh, two I actually have all that you're, what you're seeing here, I have all American Rift Tech units with the exception of the Grizzly Walker. So th let's talk a bit about these. This is the Bruin. I talked about the heavy uh, direct fire support, and this is the Kodiak. Um, the Kodiak is technically an anti-aircraft platform, uh, and there are there is rules, of course, in here for calling in airstrikes or artillery strikes off board. And this can actually be useful for shooting down enemy airplanes, but its main purpose is, um, I mean, that's its stated purpose, but in the game terms, you're going to be using it for chopping up infantry formations um, and taking out like the tougher units like the werewolves and vampires and so forth because uh, it can lay down. It has two light auto cannons and four, four mod deuces. Um, and then the other one of these, the third one, which I don't have, is is the um, the the Grizzly Walker, which is it has this cannon and then two fists to, to beat stuff up with, and also to tear down buildings and build improvised fortifications. So that's one of the units I don't have. I also don't have uh, American uh, Firefly units, which are basically they're paratroopers with with anti gravity jet packs, very similar to the you know the anti gravity packs. On here, but they're individual infantry with them. They don't look like the Rocketeer. I think it would be cooler if they did. And they do have a special. They actually, like I said, these guys aren't. This guy's 3D printed, and this guy is is actually a Warlord figure for for Sergeant Rock, the the DC Comics character. I I don't know how they got the rights to do him, or if he's just called Sergeant Rock or whatever. I use them as Paragons, but they actually have their own Paragon sets, which are. I haven't been able to find in stores, and they're, they're, they're really cool, really cool looking. Um, so those are the only three Conflict 47 American units I don't have. I have everything else. Oh, you know, that's not true either, because I actually don't have the Toad, the Toad uh, Tesla artillery. Um, so, all right, I guess I, my goal is, in addition to uh, building so, some winning armies, is to actually get all the, the Rift Tech stuff for the Americans, at least. Like I said, it's, it's relatively affordable, so um, I don't mind doing it. So yeah, anyway, um, those are my initial thoughts about Conflict 47. Walked you through my army, some things I do like and don't like about the rules and the setting. Um, and uh, this will be the first in a number of videos about Conflict 47 because I want to do some more about my actual um, unit formations, how I deploy them, some tactics I use, some general tactics about... Um, so you want things to keep in mind when playing the game, especially for people who are used to playing uh, other games. Um, honestly, if you're familiar with Bolt Action or Conflict 47 yourself, you, who, they probably won't be um, eye-opening to you very much. But uh, definitely things to keep in mind for, for newbies. I do want to have a series of videos about this, so expect more over the next several weeks. Um, and I will also talk about uh, some of the, I mentioned, I, I have done a bunch of, besides these, I have done a bunch of Warhammer painting, and although I, I ba I've had it with Games Workshop, um, and I don't intend to buy any more of their miniatures, I, I do have painted some really cool units, I think, and so I'll talk about them and their, um, their the lore for the, these, mostly Imperial Guard, but also some Space Marine units. Now, the other thing I want to point out to you is my books here, let me put these back for a second, but if you like Conflict 47 because you're interested in alternate history, um, you will probably also want to check out our Ascension Epoch book series, starting with Population of Loss, which is four short tales of the Martian War. Ascension, our Ascension Epoch, book, Ascension Epoch books are heroic adventure uh, series that uh, start with the idea that the, the world changed drastically when 
In the 1850s, people started to get superpowers, again, that they hadn't had for thousands of years. It affected the Crimean War, the American Civil War, but the big change was in 1898, the Martians invaded, and that set up a completely different history that the rest of the books take place in. So if you do like alternate history, that's, I, th I think, um, realistic and well thought out, given, given the super weird supernatural premises, uh, I think you'll really like our books. We also have, in addition to our, our regular uh, books, we also have RPG material like uh, This Is Our Zine that we released last year, Dauntless, The Heroic Adventure Zine, uh, Prophets of Darkness. Uh, these, these discuss the alternate, these are illustrated, they have uh, their system agnostic game rules for role playing games, it can also be used as source material um, in war games if you like, for they cover the alternate history uh, of the setting. They cover specific characters and take uh, inspiration directly from, uh, cl in this case, classic horror fiction of um, Hans Heinz Ewers, Manly Wade Wellman, uh, Arthur Mack, and Algernon Blackwood. Uh, and, of course, you know, the, the H.G. Wells element of uh, any Arthur Conan Doyle stuff of the Martian War. Um, so. Uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs stuff in there. Okay, so uh, if you like that kind of stuff, if you like old books, if you like um, imagining what the world might have been, you'll definitely want to check out our books. Uh, there'll be a link in the description. Uh, you can check us out on ascensionepoch.com as well. So uh, thanks for listening today. Um, sorry for not putting up a new vid video in several months. As you, as you can see, I've been I have not, however, been standing idle. I've been making a lot of cool miniatures. So let me know what you guys think. If you're going to pick up Conflict 47 or some other Warlord games, uh, let me know what you think about the, if you've played this and want to compare it to other games, what you, what you think about them, what you like about it versus, say, 40K or um, some of the other skirmish games. Uh, and especially let me know what you think about the alternate history of Conflict 47 setting. So until next time, this is Mike DiBaggio signing off.